It's all weighted. It's Skippy Lee. This is Mickey Strabetti and a video about relative pronouns and their clauses. So a couple of rules. First of all, uh, the function of a relative pronoun is to introduce more information about another noun, specifically a noun that is not inside of the relative clause. clause. The antecedent being the other noun that it's referring to or giving more information about. It will match that noun in both gender and number, not necessarily case. Uh, it may have the same case, and if it does, that is coincidental. It needs to have its own case because it has its own function within its own clause. Uh, the uh, relative pronouns have the same functions as nouns, which we've talked about before. Um, if you'd like to review those, you can go back and review the noun video. A relative pronoun will begin the clause unless it's part of a prep phrase, in which case the preposition usually comes first. Uh, we'll have an example of that later. Um, the verb always ends the clause. This is the chart. It will pay off huge dividends if you take some time to memorize it. And uh, here's an example of how to translate relative pronouns according to their function. So if it's nominative, you're going to translate it usually as who, unless it's a uh, neuter, you can translate it as which. So for example, the kid who has a hat is best. If it's dative, just like with nouns, we usually put two or four in front of it. So the kid to whom I gave a hat is best. If it's accusative and it's the direct object, you usually translate it as whom. So the kid whom the hat covers is best. Uh, if it's ablative and it's part of an object of a preposition, um, just as in Latin and English, the uh, uh, pro, uh, preposition will come first. So the kid on whom the hat rests is best. All right, pause for the video for a moment. Take some time to copy down these four sentences and mark them up. Put brackets around the relative clauses. Um, label the function of all of the nouns. Draw arrows from any adjective to its antecedent and um, as well as from the pronouns to their antecedents and mark the verbs at with a V. All right, so here is sentence number one. You can see that I put brackets around qui scaptrum tenebat because that is the relative clause. Um, here I have everything marked. Um, this right here might be a little confusing. This is a subject complement. These two words go together. King Cogadubinus. Both of these are nominative singular. Um, and qui here, our relative pronoun, is masculine and singular. It could be plural uh, in form, but according to context, it is a singular because the verb is singular. Uh, and Outside of the relative clause, we have senex, which is also masculine singular. Therefore, that is the antecedent. Okay, number two, I have quem servus ducebat um, in brackets because that's our relative uh, clause. Um, here are the um, markings for everything. Uh, quem is accusative and singular. It's masculine, so we want to look at the fact that it's masculine and singular in order to identify its antecedent. Agnes is masculine and singular, so that is its antecedent. This is going to read the lamb which the slave was holding was the victim. All right, um, number three, we have a uh, quad regum maxima delectavit erat equus. Um, I have quad through delectavit bracketed off because quad is beginning the relative clause, delectavit is as the verb is ending the relative clause. Here are all of our markings. Quad is neuter and singular. Donum is neuter and singular. Therefore, that's the antecedent. So the, um, the gift which delighted the king very much was a horse. Number four. I have a quad onculi ferabant marked off because that is the relative clause. Uh, I have in patera aurea um, set off by parentheses because that's a prep phrase. Aurea is an adjective and it is the same ending. They're both, they, both patera and aurea are feminine singular ablative, so that's why they are going together. Any word that is modifying a word in a prep phrase needs to be part of the prep phrase. Uh, for more information on prep phrases, um, go back and watch the video about prep phrases um, or write down your questions and ask them in class. Okay, here are the rest of the words in the sentence labeled. Okay, so quad is uh, neuter, it's singular. 
outside of the relative clause, we have weenum as also neuter and singular. Therefore, that's the antecedent. So this sentence will read, the wine which the slave girls were carrying was in a gold bowl. All right, so number five. Again, pause the video, copy these down, take a few minutes to mark them up, and then unpause the video and check your answers. Okay, so let's look at number five. I have quae coronam garabat blocked off because that is the relative clause. Here is everything labeled as such. Um, you can check your charts uh, to uh, make sure all of these make sense. If not, please write down some questions and ask them. All right, so quae, quae can be a couple of different things. It, in this case, it is nominative, it is feminine, it is singular. So the nominative makes it the subject of its own clause. The feminine and singular tells us what its antecedent is. Femina is outside of the relative clause. It is also feminine and singular. Therefore, it's the antecedent. The sentence will read, the woman who was wearing a crown was the queen. All right, number six. Um, quam through tenabat is our relative clause because it begins with a relative pronoun, ends with a verb. Here is everything marked. All right, so quam is accusative, therefore it's the direct object within its own clause. It is feminine and it is singular. So we look outside the relative clause. Victima is feminine and singular, therefore it's the antecedent. This sentence is going to read, the victim which the slave was holding bleated. All right, uh, number seven. This is an example of when we have a, um, a relative clause that does not begin with the relative pronoun. Um, and that's because the relative pronoun is a part of a prep phrase. So we have a prep phrase embedded inside of a relative pronoun, and that prep phrase happens to be beginning the relative pronoun. Uh, Polkerima is an adjective, so I underlined it. Uh, let's see, so we as nominative singular, we don't label anything in here because that's a, a, rel a, a prep phrase. Stabant is our verb. Erot is a linking verb. We label pulcherima by drawing an arrow back to its antecedent. And remember, adjectives match their antecedent in case number gender. Both of these are feminine nominative singular. All right, so in which um, qua is ablative because it is uh, being governed by the preposition here. Um, but what's its antecedent? Um, in order to answer that, we need to recognize that it is feminine and it is singular. So let's look outside of the relative clause. What is feminine and singular? The answer would be we All right, last one. Uh, quad Melissa and Trowit. This is um, a dependent clause. It cannot stand on its own. However, I purposely threw this in here, even though it's not a relative clause, because quad can be kind of confusing. The very first time we saw quad uh, back in, I don't know, stage four or five, uh, we learned it as because. If you translate it as because, it's, it's introducing a dependent clause, but it is not a relative clause. We're not going to translate it as which. We're going to translate it as because. And you, you just got to ask yourself a couple of questions in order to figure it out. Does it make sense as which? Um, what would its antecedent be? Quad is neuter, it's singular. Are there any neuter singular nouns on the outside of this relative clause um, that it would be modifying? The answer would be no. Grumio is masculine, erot's a linking verb, litissimus is masculine. Um, so there's no noun that it could possibly be modifying. Plus it just makes sense to translate it as because, because Melissa entered. So let's go ahead and mark the sentence. Um, Grumio is the subject. Melissa is the subject of the dependent clause. Intra, what's the verb of the dependent clause? Uh, this should actually say subject complement. Sorry about that. And it um, is going back to modify Grumio. Um, and so this sentence would read Grumio because Melissa entered was very happy. All right, so remember, a relative pronoun is showing your relationship to another noun in the sentence. It's giving you more information about that other noun in the sentence. Um, it will always match its antecedent, which will be outside of the relative clause in number and gender. It has its own function within the relative clause. If it happens to have the same function as its antecedent, that is coincidence. Um, it uses the same case functions as nouns. It begins the clause, unless, of course, it's in the prep phrase and the verb ends the clause. Uh, while I to discipuli.